Let's have a look at what's in the box first. So what's in the box? Well, you firstly have your Nespresso pod adapter. You pop your pod in there and use that. You can, if you don't want to use pods, use ground coffee and that there's a little pod there that you can fill up. It only takes about five to six grams. There's a coffee cup. There's a ground coffee spoon that also acts as a tamp. It comes with a USB-C type cable as well to charge it. It can deliver 20 bars of pressure. That's what it says, up to about 20 bars of pressure. And it's not that heavy, about 700 grams. Comes in lots of different colors as well, so you can get it in, this is the teal, there's space gray, forest green, pearl white, crimson red. Yeah, that's about pretty much all there is. Lots of information, lots of manuals, lots of little shortcuts. I like what they've done with the packaging. It's really nice. Now I have to say the Outer Nano is pretty unique in its ability to boil the water for you and then extract it. There's no other device that I know of at the moment that can actually do that. There's other ones that can grind your coffee, but you still have to add the hot water in. This one, you can put in room temperature water and boil it all the way up to 96 Celsius, which the amount of energy that this has to boil it up means that you're limited to about five brews. So you're not going to be able to take it on week long trips if you're having to boil the water. However, if you use boiling water from say a thermos, then you're gonna be able to boil it about 100 times, maybe 200 times. I'm not gonna test it. That's what it says in the manual. So it's not actually boiling the water then, it's just using the heat from the water already and passing that through the extraction. So whether that's gonna be at 96 degrees or not, I'm not really sure. It really depends on how far you've traveled with the thermos and how hot it was to begin with and how good the insulation is on your thermos. But it's still a much better solution if you're, you've got somewhere where access to boiling water already and you just want to make a couple of brews, this charge on this is gonna last you hundreds of coffees. That really makes it a very useful companion. Now it has a couple of different ways to brew the coffee. One of the main reasons I think that you would buy this is if you have a pod machine and you wanted to travel and you don't wanna take your pod machine with you, maybe you don't have electricity, this would be a great solution for you. I don't think this is gonna be for your aficionados because it's not big enough. It only carries five to six grams of ground coffee in the in the capsule and that's about what a pot is but the problem is is that it extracts it out at about 30 mils so you're getting a what is that a six six times extraction the six to one extraction so i'm going to give it a try oh, we'll try it we'll see what we got so i've got a couple of brews here i want to do i've got my bag of goodies i've got some beans i've got some pre-ground and i've got a pod and that'll give us a good example of three different types of brews and i might even try doing some boiling water and some running it through just to, with, with my thermos water and see how it go. I've got some milk as well, so that's gonna be interesting to see if it cuts through the milk at all. All right, let's get cracking. I'm gonna show you how to use the pod. And we're gonna taste that and see if that tastes, how that tastes. I don't, I don't love pods, I have to say. I don't like the way that they give you really old coffee and it's really dark roasted because obviously it stores for a long time on the shelf. They want to make as much money as they can, so they use cheaper coffee and they roast it darker. And that's purely why pod coffee is cheap. It's not because it's better, it's convenience over quality. So I've got my little pod, pop it in the pod capsule holder so that compresses up underneath here. Now we add some water into the top and there's some fill marks, so you can go to 50, 70, and then there's a max fill mark, which is a little bit above, so it's probably 80 mil. I'm gonna to go to 50 mil. I don't wanna put 70 mil in, because when I use 50 mil, I'm gonna get about 30 mil extraction. Even that's a bit too long for my likings. And that's what the recipe recommends. Pretty much, very simple. There you go, you heard the pod pop. It's a very noisy device. That isn't bad crema for that type of pod. Yeah, that's not a bad little one. I mean, pod coffee, that is not a good pod coffee. <laughs> I mean, that is not a good coffee. That's good for a pod coffee. I mean, it just tastes burnt. But yeah, you know, that's pod coffee. That's actually a really good extraction from the device. That's nothing on the device. That's all on the pod. And yeah, I don't mind that. I mean, I do mind that. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to continue drinking. That is very bad. But that is what how easy it was with the pod. Just pop it in. Then we clearly to take the pod out. Waste a bit of nature. I'm not going to leave it out here, obviously. Some ground coffee that I have. And it takes five grams, so I don't need to carry a lot with me. But I have got a lot of extra beans with me just to back it up in case. So let's get the scales out. And obviously normally I wouldn't be taking my scales with me into this sort of extreme hike. Let's measure it, make sure that I've got enough coffee in there. So I'm gonna tamp it down now. I'm only gonna tamp it lightly because I've made the grinds a little bit finer. When I was messing around with it before, I made the mistake of going too fine with the coffee. And that meant that when it extracted the coffee, nothing came out. But not only that, it actually caused this seal here to build up so much pressure, it was locked and I couldn't undo it. So I had to keep running coffee through. All right, now you double click this and that bypasses the heating phase, goes straight into the coffee extraction phase. And you can see here, nice extraction coming out, nice flow. It's still got some color in it, it's starting to turn a little bit white now. This is where I'd normally stop it. In fact, I am gonna stop it there. You can see the extraction, it's not bad. It's a little bit on the light side. This is older coffee from this morning, so it is going to flow through a bit quicker than if I freshly ground it. And that's obviously what you wanna do is freshly grind it. It's a bit thin, yeah, it's not bad. That actually is quite a nice, very thin. And obviously it's nothing compared to what you could get out of some other devices or at your home. But that isn't the point. This is really about enjoying the view and enjoying a convenient way to make a decent coffee. So if you had some milk, you could add it to there. Actually, I have some milk. Let's get my other thermos, which I brought some preheated milk in. And that's just gonna allow me to add in a bit of milk for my latte. See how that tastes. Hey, that's not bad. That cuts through the milk quite nicely. I actually think that helps a lot of the imperfections in the coffee itself, because it was a little bit on the bitter side. And that just neutralizes it. That's pretty good. Now to enjoy some scenic things. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm gonna take a little detour for you that live in America. You don't realize that uh, we have a lot of wild wilderness here. I mean, we are the same size as the US and we have a 10th of the population. So there's a lot of wilderness. And so my mother's property, her house is right up the hill, has all of this fern gully area down here and a kangaroo. I'm going to just go and find it. I can see it over there. I'm going to just go and track it down and see if I can catch it on camera. Uh, that was pretty special but we do get a lot of them back here and koalas wombats echidnas all sorts of beautiful creatures obviously tons of birds and um yeah when you live in a spot that looks like that you're going to get a lot of wildlife it's beautiful anyway back to grinding Like I got coffee grinds all over my leg here. If you can see, yeah, I'm not gonna look at the coffee grinds all over my leg here. One of the pitfalls of camping is that you get very messy when you're trying to make coffee because you don't have any good flat surfaces. And don't wear cream colored pants, that really doesn't help. So get my little scoop. Scoop holds about five grams, so if you can fill it up in one go, I don't have to muck around. Tamper's not bad. 
it's, uh, you're not here to make specialty coffee, but that's all right. And put that dispersion screen back on top. Pop that in there. Ooh, yeah. Now, there we go. Okay. I've got to add some nice boiling water. Okay, where's my little cup? Here we go. Yeah, yeah, the oils of the fresh ground. I'm going to have to uh, try it again. It's a little bit fine. Now, I did pack it in. I probably shouldn't have tamped it. And that, I think I keep making that mistake where I keep tamping it. And even though it does say to tamp it, I just have found it's better because you want to go a bit finer with the grinds and just a little bit better when it's not tamped. It's going to take forever. The creme is decent. There we go. That's much better now. All right, tasting. Oops. Yeah, that's a reasonable extraction. I think there's a lot of oils on there. I don't know if you can see the creme is pretty decent. It's a bit light, but it's very nice. And yeah, that's absolutely lovely. I wouldn't be unhappy, let's say, if I took this camping and I had this coffee, I'd be very satisfied, especially the, the view. It's lovely out here. It's so quiet. Really, a few bird noises. <laughs> Can't sit here forever, otherwise you guys are gonna get very bored. So that's, that's what the fresh ground looks like. And then, all right, so I'm gonna just adjust that grind and then I'll show you what it looks like. Let's have a look. Readjusted the grinds. Definitely not gonna tamp hard today. Just gonna pop it straight back in and give it another go. So it's got so much power. I'm gonna actually boil my water. And it's not from room temperature because I've already boiled this water. Let's see how good it does, how long it takes if I boil the water using the device. I think it takes like three and a half minutes when you're um, using from ground, from room temperature water at ground level. So to do this, we do click and hold. There we go. See the lights there? That's actually telling you how far along the temperature is. So if it was room temperature, it'd have one dot. If it was a little bit hotter, two. And you can see here it's at three flashing on three. Taking its time. Obviously a huge amount of energy is used to boil water, especially up to 96 degrees Celsius. So it's not going to be something that a little guy like this is going to be super quick at. If you were camping a bit more extreme, you'd take a jet boil. They're much better to boil water. It boils the water in one minute, I think. And that's my preferred method. Here we are. We're almost at the top now. When it's finished, it does actually give you a warning. So you don't have to hold it like I am over the cup. You can pop it down. See that beep? That's a warning that's going to start. Extraction's coming through. There we go. You can see it's a lot hotter. It came through quite nicely. It's a bit noisy. You can hear it's very noisy. Let's have a look. Yeah, well, my espresso is much nicer and hot now. It was a little bit on the cool side before because the water had cooled down. This is much nicer and hot. Definitely tastes better, I think. Yeah, you're definitely better off maybe taking your thermos, still boiling the water in here, just because you get that nicer, smoother extraction. It's a lot more balanced. The other one was a little bit under extracted, like a little bit on the sour side. Not a huge amount, but just, you know, I did notice it. But that's quite nice. So as I said before, this is not going to replace your, your Pico Presso or your Nano Presso. This is a completely different target audience. This is for convenience. This is for you don't have power at your site, but you want to be able to quickly have a coffee in the morning. You're a pod drinker, or maybe you're just happy to sacrifice. I'm not going to be taking this with me everywhere I go, but you know, a lot of people aren't really interested in making their espresso and doing their WDT dosing it exactly like if you're just happy to scoop out a scoop of coffee in the morning pop it in here 
and press the button and get your coffee, then that is probably the perfect machine for you because if you've got a charger nearby, you can get 100 if you just use boiling water. And I think there is a market here for this. I think this is a great little device for a lot of people. So that's my review of the Outer Nano. I'm gonna enjoy my coffee on Contemplation Rock and contemplate something really deep and meaningful, like maybe what my next coffee video is gonna be about. I'm Roger Coffee Coach, and as always, enjoy your brew.